All right, this is just an introduction to the Legend of Grimrock editor. I have the editor opened. I've scooted it up in the corner a little bit. Uh, it just says Dungeon Editor up there. So we're just going to start at the beginning. New project. Just call it test. And I'm Comag. And the dungeon is this is a test. Now here you would put uh, you know a real name, or you can click this generate to have some cool names come up but uh, you know come up with your own name <laughs> but if you're really not creative then I guess some of these will work but I'm gonna leave it as test and then uh, this tells you where the save file is gonna be going and here you write a little description this is the description that will show up when people are looking at what mods to play they'll they'll be able to read this and you type it as a long straight line but it'll be uh, more like a paragraph when somebody reads it and they just click create and it takes a second and here you go boom you have one little room here um, each level has a name and this level isn't named yet there's only one level uh, you see your asset browser over here with starting with A and B uh, it's really long there's like 300 things and it goes all the way down to Zandul's orb you can start typing things like TOR for uh, torch um, and it starts narrowing down you know, it starts with the anything that has a T in it, which is most things. Anything that has a T-O, anything that has a T-O-R, like the fire torque. But that way, you don't have to search for what's necessarily the beginning of something. If you just know somewhere in there, there's the word plate. You know, so we have dungeon pressure plate, and then the plate armor, and then these others. So uh, that helps you search for things. Uh, over here is the preview window, which we're not running yet, and then the inspector. Um, if you have items it tells you about them here we have this little square room let's just go ahead and click play for preview here we are uh, I'm turning around you use the same controls that you have for your game so you can walk around it's kind of small here I mean you can do all the controls like punch and stuff and you can move your guys just the same as you do in any other uh, time you're playing except it's not working alright let's make it big there for some reason they don't switch when it's small Maybe that's a bug. Uh, I should make notice that this is a beta version that I'm testing. They've already updated it a couple times, but I'm sure they will be updating it more. So maybe not everything you see will be exactly th the way it is by the time you get the editor. I make it big by hitting F. That's full screen. And this is a way that you can see things more clearly, just as if you were playing the game regularly. Get that torch. You know, he has a torch. I could put that on the ground and get that torch. It's really dark now. Oh, put it back. Okay, the torch that you always start with while editing is uh, called an ever-burning torch. Uh, so it won't get dim. Now that's just for testing when you're using the editor in the final, when you export your map to be played in the, the final game, in the regular game, the characters won't have that ever-burning torch. So don't worry about that. All right, F again to shrink it down, and I can pause it. You can see the flame is not animating anymore. If monsters were attacking you, everything would just be paused now. Or I can stop it completely. And when you stop it completely and you press play, it starts over again. So if you want to keep going from where you were, just pause it. But if you want to be starting over, then you can uh, press stop. Now if I press play, even while it's running, I can go up here and click on this Create the Tunnels Draw Walls tool and you can see on the map here I'm gonna just draw a little tunnel around this way and come up behind me now in the game when I click on this window again those walls aren't there yet until I hit play and then they just instantly get created so even if it's currently playing you can just hit the play again to update something so if I wanna take that wall and make it open right there I did that and it's still there until I click play and then it's gone it's open there um, and you can see when I'm moving around the blue arrow is moving where the party is and the light blue arrow is where it originally was now I can hit escape to take the focus off this preview window right now you see the little white outline so you know it's currently having the focus if I hit escape it's not there so hitting left and right doesn't work anymore I can just click on it to do it again I can click pause and stop the focus that way or just escape works and it's still running it's not paused now over here 
Uh, one quick trick I want to show you is how to update where the party starts. I'm going to stop that so you see the regular blue arrow there. If I hover over this square and hit Y, it jumps to a new starting location. Now, where you exactly hover the mouse pointer, that determines which direction your party is pointed. So if I hover down here and hit Y, you're going to start facing south. So I can hit down here, to the left, up, to the right. So it's very precise. And you just quickly hit Y, 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 Y. So I'll hit Y pointing toward that hallway. And then when I press play, I'm aiming south right now down that hallway. And then I go back up north. All right, so let's do another torch. Now, if I want a torch on the wall, you have to select torch holder. If you notice, it automatically selected this add object. Uh, I could have clicked on it. So if I click on the select tool, then it's back on this. And I can select things like that torch or this starting point. Let me stop that again. If I hit plus, then whatever is currently selected in the asset browser, it will create that. You can see that little torch holder is floating around. And when I click, it's going to place it there. Now I can place another one. But I'm going to hit the select tool and look at that torch. It, and it does not have a torch. I can check here to add a torch. So if I don't add a torch, it would be an empty torch holder. If I add one, it will be full. Let's go in the preview. You can see down here there's some light over here. And there it is. If I come back over here and take off the torch and click play again, the torch is gone. So I'll add it back. All right, so those are some of the quick basics. Uh, one more thing to mention is the shortcuts for these buttons up here. Uh, the select tool is one, the add items tool is two, and the draw walls is three. So if I'm down here drawing some walls and then I want to go back and add a torch, just hit two, add the torch. Then just hit one, select the torch. So you can work quicker when you're using one, two, three. If you just watch these buttons, even though I'm down here, one, two, three, one, two, three, it cycles through them. Now, just so you are aware, sometimes in the inspector window, there's places to type things in. And if you're currently typing down there and you hit one, two, three, it's just gonna put the numbers one, two, three down here where you're typing. So you have to uh, remove the focus from this typing area. Now this this torch doesn't have anything to type in, but some of the other things do. So, or even if I was renaming it here with the ID, so one two three just adds the numbers right there. It doesn't change what I'm what I'm doing. So I go back. If I hit enter, now there's no more focus there. Now one two three works for those shortcuts again. There is also a copy paste feature and cut. So Control X, Control C, Control V, your standard cut copy paste commands if you're on select then if you if you light up something like a torch select it so it's yellow and so what I'm doing you see it moving around I'm hitting W A S D so up down left right and I can put a new location so let's say I wanted to leave it there it's there I can select this one and control copy and control paste and it's putting the new one right on top of it, but I can start moving it around and the old one's still there. So I can put the new one over there. Now if I select it, uh, I can remove the torch because this one already had a torch. When I copied it, the new one had a torch. Usually when you place a new torch holder, it doesn't have a torch. You have to manually add it. So some of the objects, if they had lots of, of unique settings, uh, you might not want to make a new object and have to reset all those settings. You might want to copy one that you already have, which already has the settings the way you want, and then just move it into the new location. So moving around WASD, but and you can also do Q and E to rotate where it, which side of the square, which way it's pointing. So you can see over here this little indicator on the left means it's it's over on the left side on the left wall. There's no wall there, so that wouldn't make sense. If I hit E one more time, it'll be up at the top, and now it's the, it's against that wall, so that's good.